not a normal episode. All right. Thank you for listening to another b- boners boners episode of, bonus episode of Remake Rewind. Once again, we are going through and watching all the Fast and the Furious franchise films, at least the the normal ones. We're, we haven't decided if we're going to do Hobbs and Shaw yet, although I'm thinking we'll hold off on Hobbs and Shaw until the ninth movie comes out, if it ever actually comes out. I'm getting pretty but, invested in this series now. <laughs> but we... uh. We did a recent episode on how Point Break and the first Fast and the Furious movie were basically the same film, and it got us excited about watching these movies, and uh, we're we're just going to watch all the Fast and the Furious franchise films, and just- We're just watching them all. We're just going to break it down for you guys. (laughs) This this one and the fifth one are my two favorite of the series, and if I had to pick one, I'd probably say this one overall is probably my favorite. Oh, that's interesting. Um, although I'm really excited about the seventh one because the seventh one has some really great action, but I think uh, when you, when we get into the seventh one, I think the the plot elements kind of really jump the shark with like <laughs> the god's eye and like the hacking. So I think the seventh and eighth ones are pretty ridiculous and over the top. I think this is the last one that's almost grounded, but it, it, it's not. <laughs> I'm uh, I think it's grounded until they flip a tank. Yeah, well, and then uh, Dom launches himself out of a car when Letty gets right. flipped Which off the at tank the same and they collide in midair. So yeah. well, let's work up to that. But I think, you know, I don't know if I don't. This one is not my favorite one. I think I like five more. My issue with this one is that it felt very inauthentic. If that's a thing that you can say about Fast and Furious, I think that <laughs> I think that all the like stunts and all the car action and stuff was the biggest and best that this franchise has been so far but all of the other stuff felt like um i don't know it just didn't a didn't little resonate contrived. the same way yeah a little contrived and just like uh we're being pretty crazy right anyway here's some cars um yeah and so we kind of i, I also oh, had a, sorry i was just gonna say about the action specifically the car action was mostly okay but there's a lot of fighting in this one like hand-to-hand combat and gunfights and stuff and all of that stuff was uh, cut really poorly, in my opinion. It was very confusing editing. I I, I can see that with the gunfights, especially in the one where they're at the like that scrapyard. Mm-hmm. I, I think I agree with you there. I just didn't know uh, that. Just the I, I didn't know what the, the geography of, of anything weird. happening was. I didn't know where That's people fair. were in relation to each other. And then, like a microcosm of that is when they're fighting. They're doing this like very American, very Hollywood action thing where they're just cutting like on the punches. Um, yeah. So, you, so you're cutting like every half second or something very like Jason Bourne. And it's confusing and kind of overwhelming. And it also like makes me appreciate the movie less because I want to see choreographed action sequences that happen in like wide uh, shots. Yeah. And that's that's been talked about a lot in that. Born definitely did change that and we haven't really had anything outside of like the raid um daredevil on on the marvel tv shows but even like the big budget marvel movies you're not really getting long oh i i disagree with that actually i think the winter soldier made a point of doing wider cuts winter soldier i would say yes and i'd say the final thanos fight with captain america Mm -hmm. but other than those two fights I don't There's think not a lot. I don't think Marvel is as bad about it, and I, I think they're better about it as far as like big budget Hollywood films go. I, than, I think their cuts most. are probably about three quarters of a second to a second versus a lot of other movies are down to like half a second, a quarter of a second to half a second in action scenes, which is insane. Yeah, and I mean it's partially. I mean I think it's partially uh, not caring about the authenticity of a fight scene but i think it's also a matter of budget like marvel has more money than god and they can say okay we're going to take six months to train chris evans to handle you know his shield in a specific way so that we can get this one unbroken shot of captain america fighting and uh not all studios have that kind of money or they don't want to allocate it that way well i don't necessarily think it's an issue of a budget on these because five made over a billion dollars like it oh yeah these movies make billion dollars but i think what it comes down to is this is 
I'm sort of Katrina speaking actually generally, watched. But... Yeah, but Katrina watched like the most of the end of this movie with me. The the freeway, that kind of chase scene with the tank and the airport one. Mm-hmm. And she was like the the air like the one on the freeway. She was saying like that's a minimum of six days of shooting. A minimum, mm-hmm. and and that, that was like only part of the stuff part that she watched, and then she left and came back. Like they probably se- seriously spent like a month just on that freeway. Well, that's kind of what I'm talking about, though. Like they yeah. they want to allocate all of their and by and I know that the post production on this film was like insanely long, and they rushed it, which cost more money. But that's kind of what I'm saying. Like they don't have time to make sure that their hand to hand fight sequences yeah. are well done because they have to spend so much money on. Um, the the CG and all of the car stuff, all of the big stunts, because that's what people were going for. What's what's crazy about this movie in particular was originally when they announced it, they said they were going to film the sixth and seventh movies back to back all that's at right. one time. This was going to be one giant movie, which is what they they said they were going to do with nine, ten, and eleven, and then it changed to just ten and eleven being back to back. But this movie they actually were starting to film, and then they decided for budgetary reasons, kind of like what you said, not to finish going that way after the movie got delayed a little bit. So like the big airport sequence, which is the finale of this film, wasn't supposed to be in this film. It was supposed to be like the opening of the next movie. Oh, wow. And then it just ended up through budgetary reasons and the fact that they'd already filmed it, they just kind of crammed it in. So like this movie essentially has two finales, which is pretty crazy. Maybe if it was in the next movie, they would have had a little bit more space to explain why the runway was so long. Yeah, so somebody calculated it, and it was it would have had to have been like eighteen miles long for <laughs> this to make sense. And at the time, at the That's time of so filming funny. this movie, there were the longest runway in the world was like three point six miles somewhere in Europe. Wow! So not even close. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> really make sense. It's but absurd. I I still really like this movie, and I think part of it is the cast like uh luke luke evans i think is a he's great i don't think he's up i don't think he's up there with carl urban in terms of being underrated but i think he's a very very good actor and i think he's genuinely good in everything he does he's one of these guys that i think was set up to be a bigger star than he ever than he's achieved so far and i think it's because he keeps on getting these big movies and you know, farts go sideways because he was in Dracula 2000, right? He was in Dracula Untold. He was in that, uh, that really 2000. shitty. <laughs> I want to watch Dracula 2000 now. I, I, he also in Dracula 2000. Isn't that one Gerard Butler? I think so. Yeah. Uh, but he was also <laughs> in that really shitty 2011 3d with, um, oh, what's her name? The one who ruins all the video game movies and her husband, um, <laughs> Mila, Mila Jovovich and, and yeah, and him. Uh, they did a uh, PWSA. Yeah, they did a, a, a Three Musketeers movie, and he was one of the uh, uh, not Porthos. He was Arthos, I think, in that yeah. one. So yeah, he he's been set up to be a big actor, but yeah, he hasn't really. My favorite recent example of that is uh, Sam Worthington. <sighs> he got so many chances for like three years, and it just never worked. From 2009 to 2012, he got everything. I've, I'm not going to go into my rant again. We've talked about Sam Worthington. <laughs> I, I think he's not talented. I don't think he well, deserves that's the why, chances he's had. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that's why he didn't break through. Yeah. Yeah. He but I think Luke really Evans is legitimately a good actor. Yeah. He was, and, he really walked that line of being like charming and, um, and fucking evil in this movie. Yeah, I think so. And like, same thing as like in Gaston when he was in uh, Beauty and the Beast. Like, he played that that he walked that line really, really well. So I I would like to see him get some more stuff. I would like to see him be like Submariner in in the MCU. Hmm. I yeah. think I think that's what it would take to get him. To he looks like a level. sexy version of the Deep. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what that character is. <laughs> but uh, I, I think we need to get back to the beginning of this movie. Um, I want to go so, all the way back to the credits. Oh, okay. Well, all right. <laughs> well, did, did you do you have something to say really quick before we uh, start no, no, breaking down the movie? Let's start where you are. Okay. Because I just thought it was funny that the, one of the production companies was Original Film, and I just think that's a hilarious name for a production company. Oh, it's been that. And for it a... starts on this one, and it's it starts the on sixth this one? movie. I feel like was I've that? seen it in the other ones. Oh, did it? I I think that's Vin Diesel's production company because I think it was like the later movies that it popped up. It's like original a little, film. It, it's a little um, jab at uh, Marvel, right? Is it? It looks exactly like the Marvel title. 
It looks to me. It looks more like the uh, the ones that's at the beginning of all the Christopher Nolan films, the Interscopy or whatever. I can't remember what Syncope. Christopher Nolan thing. Syncope. Yeah, I thought it looked more like that, but hmm. whatever. We're professionals. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, I like, I, that. I like it's a good name. Like this movie, I think it's kind of funny because the movie starts in Spain and ends in Spain, and you have like our heroes go all over Europe just to pretty much end up back where they started at the end of the movie for the finale. But the movie starts with um, uh, God, my I can't remember any characters' names right now. Brian and Dom, like it looks like they're racing, but in reality they're just trying to get to Mia having her baby. Yeah, and then uh, we see the Hobbs show up at this like crime scene, and they're like, "Street racers did this," and they it's it, it's the best crew that we've ever seen no one's ever been come close to ever catching these guys and you see a bald guy in the interrogation room and you're supposed to think it's dom and it's just some other bald guy i thought that was a pretty I cute love that, joke i love that the the conceit of this movie is that street racing is such a viable form of doing crimes that there's right? another street racing crew that's essentially like a shadow version of dom and the boys well, and that's the thing that was really popular around this time when this movie came out so around within like a two-year period this movie had like the anti <laughs> crew or family uh you had the dambly the family but then you had the Dam uh, dambly like they're you they're had evil. that mission impossible movie ghost not ghost protocol the one after that um i can't remember what i the know one after oh my god is. uh but they same thing they had like the anti imf and then you yeah. had the 007 movie had Spectre, which is like anti MI6. Then which is not a had... new thing, but still. Right. But it was just at the same time yeah. that trend well, of having the anti hero versions come back. This Mar movie Even came Marvel out. Marvel had it with Hydra. This movie, yeah. This movie came out in 2013, right? Yep. So the, another thing that was happening right around this time is that the um, the evil guy, the bad guy, always gets captured on purpose as part of his plan. That happens yeah, this, in. I think I, it's at the. I think it started Very with the Dark Knight. The movie. Yeah, started with Dark yep. Knight in 2008. Um, and then I think Star Trek Into Darkness was the next year. I totally did Star it. Star Trek did it. This did uh, it. The Avengers, Avengers did, did it in 2012. Uh, 007 also did it in Skyfall. That's right. Yep. Yeah. So no, it, this it's hit a, a bunch a, of the trends of the time. I think it's still happening too, but it is a tired trope, man. Yeah, I agree with you on that. But what I, I, I legitimately liked the scenes with that weird tuner car that was just like flipping cars and stuff like that. And that I cool. did, I did think it was an effective way to bring our heroes into the fold with this guy, like Brian, like they're almost calling out the trope because all the other movies that we kind of brought up, they didn't realize it until well after the plan. Well, Tyrese says it's it too. Tyrese is like, yo, this crew looks like an evil version of us. And also like, we're so far out of our league. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing that's funny is, it, and it gets even worse in the next movie because we kind of talked about it in the last episode where we're like, why are there not like CIA people and spies and whatnot <laughs> not like yeah. taking care of things? And we kind of talked about it with Mr. Nobody who comes up in the next movie, but it's like, these are not the people who should be doing it. And it's to the point where like Hobbs doesn't even have a crew. Like he's by himself and he I'm not even clear on who, on who Hobbs works for at this point. Yeah. And well, and then he has like Tej, like, this like the first twenty minutes of the movie, he like realizes that Letty is with this crew, and then he goes to Dom. And he's like, "Hey, you're gonna beg me to come work for me after I show you this," and he like shows the picture of Letty, and Dom's like, "Cool, I'll help you out, but it has to just be me." And Hobbs is like, "No, we need a crew because like they've got a crew. They've got the evil you guys." <laughs> and then at that well, point, what he like, says specifically Tej. is to catch a wolf, you need a wolf, which I don't think is yeah. a real thing. No, but then you have Tej is like the man in the chair and he's running like the entire operation. It's insane. Like he Hobbs doesn't have like a, his own crew that could be supplemented the by the only our person crew. he brings is homegirl from Deadpool. Yeah, and Gina Carano. Yeah. And what's weird about that is I remember the first time I watched this movie and that twist that she's actually the bad guy. Like she's with the bad guys. Mm -hmm. I thought I'm like, oh shit, I didn't see that. But this time around, because I knew it, it actually really bothered me because like the fights that they're having are insane. Like they have gun battles and you see like she's shooting at Letty, Letty's shooting at her at one point, And you literally see like bullets hitting the wall, like an inch away from their face at one point. And you're like, 
there's no way that they can control this. And it didn't seem like Letty knew that Gina Carano was part of the bad crew. Yeah. And Gina Carano wasn't acting like she was part of because she was beating the shit out of Letty and shooting at her. So, like, yeah. it didn't really make sense now that I think about, about it yeah. as a twist. I, I had the same thought. Yeah. It's it's all bad. But I, <laughs> I did like oh, where... Oh, well, hold on. Since we're on that note... um. I made the note at the end that despite her amnesia, Letty still makes choices to be an international arms dealer or terrorist or whatever she is. And uh, she even, at one point in the movie, she even says something like, nobody makes me do anything I don't want to. It's like, okay, well, then you're an international terrorist. And I think that's kind of the point that like Dom has with her, like when they have their cute little street race where they're almost like synchronized in their moves and they're like staring at each other like they're in love as they're like driving through London, evading the police, almost getting civilians killed with their yeah. Yeah, <laughs> ridiculous we're talk about antics. That too. But they, uh, Dom pretty much says that and he goes, where we come from, we say, show me how you drive and you know a person or some shit like that. So I think the implication is, yeah, she doesn't have her memories. But the way her brain is still wired, she's essentially the same person just without her memories. Yeah, but I'm saying this movie but yeah, wants you're us right. to believe that she's like been brainwashed or something and that she's not responsible for being a part of Luke Evans' crew. But right. she totally uh, But yeah, I mean, she was a she criminal before. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but... she was a criminal and she chose to do it in her previous life. So... I, guess you, I guess you could argue that she was on board to do crimes, but she wasn't on board to like randomly kill people. Although I don't know yeah. what she thought that luke evans was going to do with the whatever the chip with is that, that chip i don't think she actually knew because it also seemed like she was kept at like arm's distance on yeah. everything all right because like because she, she showed up like they were the our crew was gonna beat these guys and to get back to like the the trope that you brought up with the bad guy getting caught on purpose i do think it was slightly more effective in this version of the film when almost like poking at it like we're not going to do this like you kind of brought it up in our our friday the 13th episode with the the token black character where you're like they have this line of dialogue like i you don't know me i'm not like your average black guy and then they ended up killing him immediately in this they almost call out the trope like oh we are so far away from the action where's the rest of the crew they didn't want to this is a trip trap they wanted us to be here where should we actually go mm -hmm. oh interpol's unprotected i don't know why they realized interpol was the target but then our crew goes to interpol and almost catches the bad guy so they kind of like, flip that on its head a little bit yeah um you're right but also you just reminded me like i don't know what happened in the plot of this movie yeah it's a little strange and there are a lot of times, there, there's a lot of time jumping, like the last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones, where you're like, there's no way all this happened in this period of time. Yeah. But anyway, so essentially, Owen Shaw, Luke Evans' character, gets caught on purpose. And it's really just a distraction. His crew goes and steals like a list from Interpol that will say where this chip that they want to steal so they can of, make like, locations, right? You're right. And like, what the is, locations what are really the good chip for do? night. So the chip is just like the last piece they need to build this bomb kind of thing that basically shuts down. It's like a communications oh, right. jammer. Night nightshade. Nightshade. So yeah, it's a communications okay. jammer. And so it's this last piece they need to get that. So and Rock has that line movie, that's like, um, if they you know, if a soldier blinks his eyes in combat, he he, you know, dies. So if a country shuts down for 24 hours, who knows how crazy it'll I mean, be. Yeah, un uncountable lives would be lost, which honestly, I don't disagree with that. So there was a time when I was still in my hometown. I don't know, like man. We had blackouts 2000. No, so blackouts are a little bit different, but there was a time in 2009, 2010. Uh, when I was still in my hometown where some like disgruntled AT&T employee like cut a fiber line into our hometown wow. and like internet was down, cell phone was down, home phones were down. Like people were losing their shit because they couldn't figure out like where family members were. They didn't know where people were. Nobody could call 911. So they had police and uh, fire departments ended up having to get on every freeway exit and on ramp and just be visible for people so like i could see if communications did go down for 24 hours a lot of people would die from sure. not getting access to him emergency care so i know it would be bad mike yeah so i i don't fault that line but they are no crew... the, part, the part of it that i'm that i'm making fun of is the soldier in battle thing yeah 
the way he said yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's weird that he goes that route and not like the civilian route, the civilian casualties. We're, we're nitpicking this thing where what we should be talking about how uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a war criminal in this movie. He was a, like a criminal in the last movie executing a guy who like didn't go through his due, due process. So like, he's that, not... He, I mean, that was pretty He's bad. You could buy argue, the book good guy, though. Yeah, like I think you could kind of argue that that was, you know, maybe it was in the hate, the, the heat of battle or some self defense or something or other. I feel like this movie, the, he doesn't kill the guy, but the first time we see him, he goes into, um, you know, he tortures it, the CIA, the person. <laughs> into a CIA interrogation room and literally beats the shit out of somebody. He like, destroys the interrogation room. Yeah, with the guy's body. Yeah, he's and they're like he's picking up the guy, throwing him into the ceiling, throwing him on the ground, and then breaks the, the the ceiling, all the lights, all the speakers, the, the cameras. The interviewer that's behind the two the two way mirror or whatever is you know portrayed as this little beta, beta cuck guy, and he's like <laughs> he turns to Gina Carano and uh, he's like, "Hey, is that legal?" And she goes, "You want to go in there and tell him that?" And I was like, "Oh, Hobbs is a fascist. This movie is a little bit less fun now." And this is the issue, and he's not, not as stylish as political. Batman. Not to make it political, but I'm going to take it political. If good cops don't hold bad cops accountable, then you're not a good cop. Yeah. Period. Like, if you're a good cop and you see a bad cop doing something illegal and you don't stop it and you just go, well, you know, if I went and told him he was going to do it anyway and then you do nothing, like, you're a bad cop. And that's where... So I'm just going to leave it at that. Like that guy's a bad cop too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah which is funny uh, because his whole character is based around being like a tough, good cop, but it's like, yeah. you're, you're kind of not, he's, he isn't like, he really skirts the law. He, like he almost acts like he is James Bond and has the license to kill and doesn't have to follow international laws. And like, that's just not how things work. Yeah. And like, you know, I kind of joking around about Batman being a fascist, but I think if you want to nitpick it, like Batman, he is bat, yeah, and, but also Batman like is a vigilante. He doesn't; he's not a cop, uh, yeah. and that doesn't necessarily make it okay. But there's he's operating outside of the law, and that's the thing that the police should have to deal with. But The Rock like is a cop, and he's within the the institution, or he's within the system, and he should be held to a higher standard. Well, and that's that's something that the mission impossible movies I think do really well where they have, they, they can operate outside of the law to a certain extent. And then especially like the later mission impossible movies, like Ethan hunt is always going rogue. Like they at least try to keep that shit in check. Now they're always going after Ethan hunt. Who's always doing the right thing and never like the bosses. Cause the bosses are always the bad guys in those movies. Not but, Alec Baldwin. Not Alec Baldwin. Yeah. He's the yeah. only, he's the only good boss in that yeah. series. <laughs> <laughs> fucking billy crud up uh, hey speaking of uh speaking of uh batman by the way dom is sort of a car detective in this movie oh, yeah, and he wasn't actually, five too so i it was more four, four than yeah, five four. but i actually want to counter your argument and say we thought he we called him mac truck nito and that he was like the sherlock holmes of cars and he can go to a a car scene accident and replay it almost like he's watching a video of the accident happening mm -hmm. but it turns out he fucking sucks at it because we got a new version of what actually happened and like letty <laughs> what it, it didn't happen the way dom thought it was going to the scene and doing his yeah it's crazy work. it's almost like um you know a street racer that, that grew up on the streets and has been to prison and stuff uh can't walk up to a crime scene and touch the dirt and taste it a little bit and uh automatically recreate the images in his mind of what happened right. Wow. Yeah, it's ridiculous that like they, we pre he, they presented it like he could, and then like nope, he really can't. It was and that literally me... that uh, Arkham Asylum thing that you that you brought up before, where he just yeah. like, looks at it and he's like, oh yeah, and he has like this a, is what happened a Boondock Saints recreation of it in his mind. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what that was, and he did it wrong. And that brings me to like the crux of this movie. Like the whole point of this movie is that the crew wants to rescue Letty, and then Brian like negotiates getting pardons for all of them so they can go back home so he has this little scene after his kid's born and he's like this is great you got the beach and i've got my kid and i'm happy but it just doesn't feel like home and so when dom presents them with all of this stuff like hey here's letty and here's hobbs they he wants to hire us to take care of all this blah 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 brian's like cool we're gonna get we're gonna get pardons 
And Hobbs is like, I can't do that. And Brian's like, yeah, you fucking can. I was a cop. I know you could do that shit. And Hobbs is like, okay, fine. But one of the things I want to bring up is Elena, who is the Brazil, the hot Brazilian cop that Don Wait, let's, Can we banging. put a pin in that for just one second? Because I have something yes. about that, too. Uh, similar to that, one of my notes says, surely Dwayne The Rock Johnson can help Brian get into the U.S. for a few hours. That's a whole thing I want to talk about in a minute with like okay. the timeline of this film. But you're right. That drove me crazy. But Elena is like the coolest girlfriend ever in this situation where like Dom shows up. Her and Dom Hop had a conversation up. off camera where they were like, hey, we're just fucking right. And she's like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So like Hobbs shows up and is like, hey, I need your help. Here's Letty. And like Dom actually looked for a, like a second, like he was conflicted, like maybe I shouldn't do this because I've got this hot Brazilian chick that I'm with. And well, she was I mean, like, you're joking. But like when we first see them, they're like laying in bed together. Like you see her sweet shit. side boob. Like, <laughs> it looks like they're like in love, you know, the way that yeah. it's shot and the way that it's portrayed is like, wow, Dom's, you know, moved on. And he's like found. Uh, she left Brazil and became a She gave up her fugitive. career. Yeah, she became a fugitive to be with him. Yeah. And has like been there for like the birth of his nephew. Like she's part of the family now. Family. And like yeah. she's so she's there and she's just like, dude, if this was my husband, I would totally drop you like a ton of bricks to go find my dead husband. Like, you go find Letty and everything, which I think is the right move. Like, yeah, go take care of this. Go get your pardons. Go do this. But she's just like flat out like, no, it's totally cool. Our relationship means nothing. Yeah, it was a little weird. But getting to you, you brought up the, the Brian going to the United States thing, which yeah. really had almost no bearing on the plot of this movie. And it's very they just wanted to bring Braga back. To do it. One yeah. of my notes is Braga's back, baby. But it was for nothing. And so you kind of brought it up with Too yeah. Fast, Too Furious. That, you know, it would have made sense for that villain to come back at some point. But they, they kind of like shoehorned Braga actually being a protege of Owen Shaw just to be like, hey, remember that big bad from like two movies back? He is linked worse. to this guy. This guy's even worse. He taught him everything. And he's the one who actually knew Letty was linked to you. Well, how did Shaw not warn him about Dom? How did he not warn him about paul walker uh, or brian like how it seemed like braga and owen shaw were in like constant communication how did the fourth movie happen then yeah that doesn't make any sense but to your point <laughs> what actually happened was they they get defeated in london barely like our good the good guys almost took out the bad guys in the first like half hour of the, the film and the only reason they didn't was because letty shows up at the last second and kind of like what we were talking about, keeping her at arm's reach. She's never at the critical point of the action. Like she always comes in at the last minute and kind of helps them out. So it's yeah. Where was she in her special different car? Yeah. So it seems like Owen recognizes she's good, but he probably sees that there's some good in her and doesn't want her to be part of the main plots unless he absolutely needs her to. Yeah. And he like makes a point later in the movie too, about how, he's ready to switch out any part of his team at will. Like people just at serve will. their purpose for him and he keeps yeah. him compartmentalized so that he can switch pieces out to attain his, his goal, his goal. So I think that's they're what's the going an, they're on. The anti-family. Yeah. So at, for whatever reason, Oh, so they, they go and fight this. Uh, they go, they realize this car is specially made. Like just by listening to the engine, they're like, Oh, this is a turbo diesel. And the way that it turns over, yeah, that's the car it has to have, part. yeah, they, it needs to have this weird, weird, but all of them are involved in it. Like every single person from our family is like, gives one piece of information. Yeah. And then they, so they, they narrow it down to one mechanic in all of London that possibly could have done this. And like as that mechanic dies, and we'll get into the action sequence, but as that, that character dies because the evil family, anti-family, goes to quiet him so that way people can't track them down, mm -hmm. he, he just says Braga and Brian's like, oh, I need to go. But when he, so he leaves, he goes from London to the United States, which even if he got on flight immediately, that's like a 15 hour flight. Mm-hmm. He coordinates this with the FBI agent who doesn't like him. That FBI agent gets him into the prison, 
he, well, it's his old partner, and he's helping him. Yeah, know. but he like he, they didn't like each other. Like he yeah, beat but the, the guy shit out of his career. Point. That didn't that I, didn't yeah. bother me actually. It, what, it's you're getting a little ahead of me. What bothered me was that Brian said I have to go meet with Braga or whatever. I have to mm-hmm. you know, put me in prison with him. And then The Rock was like, yeah, I can't do that. And I was like, well, who do you work for? Why can't you? Or no, no. Yeah. Uh, what what happened specifically was um, he, like he was um, – Brian says he has to go back to the United States and talk with Braga. And then uh, I think it's either Tej or um, Tyrese that says like, you know, once you step foot on U.S. soil, they're going to have you arrested. And then you're in life – you're in prison for life. And Brian was like, well, that's a risk I'll have to take. And I, the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, I think – but he's why? work. He's working for the Rock. I'm pretty sure that he can get him on the ground for a few hours. I don't even Especially understand why he look at, he didn't even have to go into prison to meet with Braga. They they should have just like they should have pulled him into an interrogation room. Yeah. yeah. Like, so there's a whole why all the cloak and dagger. This. So they go through. It, it doesn't. Yes. It, when you look at even the second movie, the second movie he is a criminal. And the FBI and the uh, Customs and Department of Homeland Security were like, we'll work with you as a criminal. You're going to go undercover and you'll have all your normal police resources. So it's like clearly that is a thing in this franchise that's already been established that criminals can work for these agencies in some sort of capacity. So you're right. They absolutely should have been able to find a way within the legal system to get him there. But they just wanted him to have his little action scenes because he gets to that prison. And then, like, his ex-partner was like, hey, this is a, a maximum security prison, and he's also in solitary, so you're going to have to get yourself into solitary. So he, like, decks the guy, and he gets in. But there's, like, this point where he takes on, like, four dudes in a prison cell. Like, that it was just so cool. another... I like that It was a fight. cool scene, but it's just, like, another thing where it's, like, each movie, they just become exponentially better at fighting. It's absurd. Yeah. Like, well, the series like started with them human. scuffles. Yeah. Like they literally scuffled and would roll around. On, when did they have time other? to have mixed martial arts training? Exactly. Uh, on, that, on that note, Letty shoots Dom after that first fight. Yeah. And he just pulls the bullet out of his own chest. Like later he that night. He just shrugs it off. This is the second time in this series where, where that he's been he shot, shot with nothing. I mean, he he was like shot in the chest. So like it was under his collarbone, I guess, but not in his lungs. And then he's like punching dudes immediately. Like, Best case the scenario, rest of the movie, he's jumping off of things. Pectoral muscles. Yeah. There's no recovery. Like, he's getting I don't in fights. Think, I didn't see him bleed later. No, he didn't. At least in the fourth movie, when he got shot, he was dripping blood later. But in this movie, yeah. yeah, he gets shot and he's fighting people. He's throwing people around. He's driving. He's jumping out of cars going 100 miles an hour. Like, one of my notes says no. the first movie was about street racers in Boyle Heights, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And so, I, I'm I'm not even really complaining. I like how crazy this franchise. It's has a gotten, fun movie. I, so but I have said this. You can't like ignore that they've literally become superheroes. Yeah. So like this, I always claim that these movies are like my Twilight's. Like the Twilight <laughs> movies are not good movies, but a lot of people love them and find a lot of joy from them and I've enjoy the watching thir- them. I've heard like the third and fourth ones are pretty good. I think the third one is directed by David Slade, who I like. The the only good Twilight movie is the last one. There's four, right? Or is there five? There's f- four. So they split the last book into two, and the first part of part one and part two is terrible. But part two is actually like legitimately pretty good. Um, even the second one's not bad. The third and the fourth one are pretty pretty atrocious. The first one's terrible, but the last one's not bad. But anyway, I I think that these movies are bad. But I think they're very entertaining. Um, But just to kind of get through through the action beats of this movie, uh, they go and recognize they have forty eight or ninety six hours after the five Twilight movies. Five Twilight movies. So yeah, the the three book, the first three, and then the fourth book was split into two. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So in this movie. They, they have 96 hours. So that whole thing with Brian, that's conservatively, even if like he, he didn't sleep, he didn't do it. I mean, you can sleep on the plane or whatever. But like just travel alone is 30 hours. Plus they gave him, he was in the prison system for 24 hours. So that four-day period they had, he would have had to take three out of those four days 
for his travel to go to Los Angeles and back to London. And he gets back right as they're going to leave London to go to Spain, yeah. which is just crazy. So in the meantime, while he's going and doing his little jaunt over to Rumspringa. Lompoc prison, uh, our crew, they go to find this, this mechanic and like the bad crew comes and like, kills the mechanic and then they have like these fight scenes that you were talking about so there's a pretty brutal fight scene between letty and uh i think her name was hicks that's gina chronic's character mm -hmm. and then you had uh, uh roman <laughs> and han got their ass kicked by like evil han and i actually enjoyed <laughs> and he also that kicked fight three scene. police officers asses yeah i actually really liked that because at this point the yeah, fourth cool. and fifth movie they had already mentioned that the rock so like the rock and the hot um and vin diesel when they fought in the fifth movie it was a draw they both had it in their contracts even in that first movie that they were working together that they couldn't lose a fight and vin diesel had it starting the fourth one that he couldn't lose a fight paul walker also had that contract as well so everything he either has to win or is a draw and i do think and you see this going for the next few movies i do think like your hans your uh your roman pierces and even your tejas they're like well, this is a way we can get more screen time if we're willing to lose a fight. It's a way they can throw another action scene in because they just get their ass kicked. And I thought it was a really fun thing where they're, like, they're kind of like edging the other person like, hey, you go, you go, and to go get their ass kicked. So I thought that was a pretty – I thought that scene was a pretty good little fight scene. But yeah, it made it no also, sense. It was also like a, an effective – uh, setting or whatever, because it was in the middle of the uh, the tube, the London Underground, a, a, yeah, the a tube. tube station. That's what they call it. Yeah, I like to take the underground. Yeah, spend my quick yeah. in the tube, and um, it was cool because it was like in the middle of the station and it was surrounded by people. It's just like a setting that you don't really see a whole lot. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, so we jump forward four days, and it's another one mm -hmm. of those things where it's like they get the bad guy gets caught again. And they meant to get caught. So they find one of the bad guys at the the Spanish Air Force Base where they're keeping one of the chips. And the whole point of that was to force the chip to move so the rest of the bad family could attack the caravan. And you just get this absurd freeway chase scene with the tank. And it's a really cool scene. Like they I think it's my favorite part of the movie. They legitimately got a tank out there. They were legitimately crushing cars. Uh, you had people on the tanks. The stunt work was phenomenal, but you do get that so uh, much collateral damage in that. So I mean, like much. they destroyed bridges. Life. Yeah, no, I'm talking about like human life, though. So yeah. many people died. Like, there's literally yeah. they make a point of having like people scramble by the camera and like get out of their car and stuff because I think they want to, you know, make sure that people feel like there's not a ton of uh, humans being killed. But there are cars that like swerve out of the way and are immediately crushed. So like there's no yeah. way that a person got out of that. And the cars are just completely flattened. Just pancaked. Yeah. Well, then you insane. have like, the bridge collapsing. And then you also have, they kind of do another thing from Fast Five because there's a point where for whatever reason, Roman gets in front of the tank. I don't know what the fuck his plan was getting in front of the tank in his little yeah. muscle car. But he's starting to get slowly crushed by the the tank so he like gets out and jumps onto paul walker's car but not before taking some chain and wrapping it around the turret high, on the tank. high tensile cable yeah i believe is what they so, called it yeah so they have this <laughs> cable that's attached to this car and then the tank is just dragging it around it's flying all over the place like uh the the end of the last movie and then dom and and brian because they know how to handle this they're like that looks like a good anchor. And so they like crash into the car to make the car fly over the edge of the bridge. So that way it would drag it. And that ends up causing the tank to flip, which causes Letty to fly off the tank. And then Dom sees Letty our, about to fa fight. Our favorite scene in the entire movie. So he gets out of the car and he like crashes his car. So he'll fly and he's going like conservatively a thousand miles an hour, <laughs> jumps out of the car, jumps out, collides with Letty in midair, spins, and then like crunch it, like crushes a car. And this is after getting shot less than four days prior. <laughs> and then they try to like hang a, hang a hat on it. Cause Letty's like, how did you know that that car was going to break our fall? Big, like, uh, you know, hand waving to the audience. And he's like, I didn't. Sometimes you just got to have faith in yeah. family or whatever. <laughs> so 
You just they at this up, point you have, you have to accept that these movies are absurd and you're just well, there to like have some fun. Because they flip the tank, they actually capture the bad guys. Like we have the entire bad guy crew back at the military base and they're like, "We got you, you bitch." And <laughs> oh, and Shaw is like, "Oh yeah? Well, I got why don't you call Mia, you bitch?" And I, like <laughs> he he got Mia and um uh elena and the baby and so they're like well i guess we're gonna let him go and the military leader is like uh fuck that like we've got them like w- you know your guys's little family is not worth millions of lives and then and hobbs you pulls, a, hobbs gun pulls him. a gun on yeah and he's like <laughs> yeah and he goes pardons go out the window and then dom's like that was never really on the table it's like wait what <laughs> okay but, so like yeah, Ho- hobbs, hobbs definitely loses his go. job after that right no, I don't know what happens doesn't. in the next movie, <laughs> but like so, Hobbs just pulled a gun on a British, you know, military leader. Like, yeah, what? So he, they let them go. They let the bad guys go. Our good guy crew immediately chases them on an eighteen mile <laughs> runway, <laughs> and they, like their whole thing is, oh, we're gonna use our tensile cable on our grappling hooks and try to prevent this plane from taking off. And you have. A lot of shit going on, but like Giselle ends up getting well, yeah, killed. Yeah, it's eighteen which, miles. Yeah, the Giselle getting killed, I thought, did think was kind of effective. Yeah, no, it worked for me. I th- I thought that worked. It was really but, sad. You saw the emotion in Han's eyes. Yeah, both of them played it well, and like I like that. Um, you know, she didn't have any hesitation. Like she sees a bad guy behind Han, but she's holding onto his hand for dear life, and she's like, "Oh, this guy's gonna kill Han." No hesitation. Let's go of him. Pulls out a gun and shoots the guy behind him in midair. But after, like a, like 10 seconds after she died, there's another shot where it looked like the plane was only like 10 feet off the ground. And this is a movie it, where people are like falling into cars, going a thousand well, miles I mean, an hour and getting shot and this and that. You're telling me that Wonder Woman couldn't like roll around on the tarmac? Well, and that's the thing that drives me crazy is so they're, they're maybe like 20, 30 feet off the ground, maybe. And so she flies... She can tuck and roll. There's a mist. Like, we don't even see her hit the ground. Like, there's, like, this weird mist or smoke that she just disappears through. Han goes crazy, beats the shit out of this guy, throws him into a turbine. Cool. He get That guy gets his come up, and it's cool. So then we're in the airplane itself, and you have Brian, Dom, and Hobbs are all in the airplane itself. And ha- da- Dom and Hobbs are, like, going back and forth between fighting, like, this giant dude and Owen Shaw and then Brian's kind of in there fighting too, but there's Van a Geef. That's who he is. Yeah, there's a pretty cool part where like Dom goes and like lifts up the giant guy, and then Hobbs yeah. just like goes him through. There's a point where like Dom does like a flying headbutt thing, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I standing there, and he like runs and jumps and like does like the Luigi in Super Smash Brothers and just like <laughs> headbutts the guy. It's super weird. But the thing that makes the Giselle death he's even got muscles make... in his head. Yeah, but the Giselle death what makes that least less effective is there's a point where like brian gets mia in the car and they reverse out of the the plane and they're they're realizing like they don't have enough weight on the plane so they happen to have a grapple hook thing too and brian they figures out how to actually things. yeah brian figures out how to use it because so far everybody else they're aiming for the flat but they keep hitting the wing so it's not effective right. and he figures out he has to shoot in front of it and then the turbine will like suck it back over and like loop around the wing and hook into the the flap so he's a physicist he figures this out <laughs> <laughs> and so they prevent the plane from taking off but there's a point where like owen is about to get off and dom like forces him into the car and like knocks him out and then dom then ha- then owen decides to like drive said car but it hits like this weird wall inside the plane shoots out the windshield of the car out the back of the, the cargo hold but he comes back in the eighth movie <laughs> He's actually at the beginning of the seventh movie in like the ICU. So it's like they're going much faster. He's falling from a much greater height, went yeah. through a windshield and hit the runway and he survives. But Gal Gadot doesn't. I'm saying. Well, and then Han uh, is coming back from the dead apparently too, which yeah. so in the mid credit sequence in this movie, uh, we see Han racing through Tokyo, right? And we mm-hmm. realize that this is Tokyo Drift, apparently, which I haven't watched in 10 years. So I don't even remember 15 years. So I don't remember what even happens in that movie, really. But I guess the audience is supposed to be like, oh, we're in Tokyo. 
Han is finally there. got there. This is Tokyo <laughs> Drift. Oh my god! Like uh, this movie that took place five movies ago is actually happening now. That's what you're supposed to take away from that moment, right? Yeah. That the timeline's fucked up. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Jason Statham shows up, and then I, like I lost my fucking mind when I did see that. The first but you know time. what? Here's what I'm talking about with people dying. We I've just accepted that Han has been dead for a while, but upon rewatching this movie, he's just walking away from a car that exploded. There's no evidence that Han is dead. In my mind, for some reason, I had an image of Jason Statham walking up to Han, putting a gun to his head and killing the, him. The problem with Han coming back, and we'll see how they handle it. But the problem but I'm saying with Han Han's back, not even necessarily dead. But the thing is the whole plot of the seventh movie is our family getting revenge on Jason Statham for killing a family member. Right. That's the whole plot of the next movie. Now we're going to watch Tokyo Drift next and then we're going to get into the seventh movie. But the whole plot of the seventh movie is avenging Han's death. And you would think at this point, when they realize Letty wasn't actually dead, and there's a line that where Brian says it to Braga like, I buried her. I know. And he's like, oh, I don't know what the fuck you buried. You buried something, but it wasn't her. Yeah. And it's like, you would think they would fucking confirm. Don... Dom flew all the way to fucking Tokyo to figure out what the fuck happened and talk to, you know, Tokyo drifter uh, Gaijin, white dude who came from, like, Missouri to go to Tokyo and talk about how he was such great buddies with Hobbs, or he was such great buddies with Han. He doesn't confirm that he's dead? Yeah. Yeah, just... Makes uh, no sense. I, was, I was expecting more of a gut punch with Han and... Yeah actually seeing it, i was like oh it doesn't doesn't seem like he definitely killed him yeah it's it's a little different we're gonna watch it but oh my god i was underwhelmed by a fast and yeah. furious movie i can't believe yeah. it but i mean <laughs> we, i think we hit pretty much um i this. want i had a couple quick ones yeah go for it bud um did they made a big deal about embarrassing that flamboyant british guy yeah that, that was sold them the stupid cars. It was stupid, and also, like, am I supposed to take away from that scene that Tej just spent millions of dollars to embarrass That's the exactly guy what you're supposed by to... taking his clothes off? Yo, yes. I'll take all kinds of clothes off for millions of dollars. Yeah. Like, that wasn't that weird. And that guy was a prick. They should have, like, done something else. But the thing else. is, like, he wouldn't that's have another example of, That's another example of The Rock being like, we're not stealing these cars. Like, okay, well, you're a fascist, and you beat the shit out of people. Why, what, what is your line, and why is it so flexible? Yeah, exactly. And, um, and the thing is, like, that guy wouldn't have fucking done it. Like, I I would have been like, dude, you got your fucking cars. I'm leaving. Like, why the fuck would he take off his clothes and shit? Yeah, exactly. It, it was ridiculous. It's a dumb scene. It, I, I actually really hate that scene. Even the first time I watched this movie, I was like, this is stupid. But yeah. I legitimately like the rest of this movie. I have a few more things. You sound like you're ready yeah. to end, but I'm not done. I, I am, um, but let, you can go. Okay. Um... The chick says, out here, we're used to getting what we want. This is London, baby. <laughs> it feels like in every movie, they have somebody raise their arms and say, this is whatever say location this, I'm in. This is Brazil. Yeah. Like the Brazil. Um, Tyrese Gibson says, I got a tank on my ass. That's funny. Those are my favorite lines. Yeah. The, there's once again, like this movie and it gets worse than the next one. But like Tyrese's character, he gets Roman sillier Pierce, and sillier. He gets sillier and sillier, and he becomes more and more of a coward. Like, like almost the very beginning of this, like he just doesn't want to do it. Well, he and, has that. They have that scene where he goes up to Tej while the Rock is talking and asks for change so he can go to the vending machine. The vending machine, and then I the Rock that shoots scene. it. Like, yeah. why? Like that's ridiculous. He's not that much of a of an oblivious asshole. Right. He's not in the in the Too Fast Too Furious. That's my point. Is like in Too Fast Too Furious, he was a cool character. He was like yeah. a good. Like he's a goofball, Brian. but I don't think he was. I don't idiot. think he would. But he really wasn't that much of a goofball. Like he was a fuck up, but he was serious. He had done time. Yeah. He was a hard. I don't think criminal. he would out now disrespect the Rock when they're all there talking about their friend who died or whatever. Yeah, it's maybe like they didn't just, know that at that moment. But. They became he became the comic relief character, but yeah. like in a way that's not actually funny. Um, Brian always opens with a flying punch. Did you notice that? He does his yeah. flying punch move once a movie. He's always doing that. He's always and, jumping and punching. And Dom always does the car, uh, yeah. wheelie. He did it the wheelie too. Yeah. They all got their like secret moves, their signature yep. moves. It's, it's, I'm fucking telling you, it's super smash brothers. Um, so my last thing is a general overview of this movie. Uh, it was good, but it's a little less fast and by curious this time. 
It was a little less. A little less by curious. So. A little faster, a little less by curious. This movie was when we started to hear that The Rock and Vin Diesel weren't getting along. It wasn't. It shows on film, man. They don't have that sexy chemistry. But the next movie is when they actually had their feud and The Rock was actually like tweeting about them being pansies. How much of that do you think is true and how much is The Rock trying to sell tickets? Uh, I think a lot of it's true based off some of the aftermath. I'm happy to go into great detail on this when we go into the seventh movie. I think it's more relevant when we get to that. But uh, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Yeah, I had fun with it. I'm stoked for the next one. Not my favorite of the series. So Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift is the one that we're going to watch next, even though it's the third movie in release order in terms of continuity. It takes place between the end of this movie and the mid credit scene of this movie. And before... (laughs) Uh, but yeah cool it's uh I'm, I'm looking forward to it but uh thank you guys for listening alex give us your plugs uh i'm on instagram at dyslexic d-y-s alex i-c and i'm selling some uh new shirts for october if you guys into horror movies i'm selling some cool shirts say final girl on them in the halloween font uh i'm on twitter at polishi it's just my last name and if you want to follow along with what i'm watching i'm also on letterboxd at polishi Nice. And you guys can check out everything that's MDX Pods related at mdxpods.com, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at MDX Pods. If you want to support the show, uh, these episodes right now, uh, we are putting on our normal feed, but after we get through this fast f- franchise, um, these type of bonus episodes, these longer ones, are going to be uh, Patreon exclusive. So if you want to support the show and help us out, uh, patreon.com slash MDX Pods. But uh, thanks for listening and. Uh, Next nice. Friday, you'll get another Halloween episode, and then uh, another. We'll, we'll get Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift in a couple of weeks. Tokyo Drift. How, how does it, the, how's the theme song go? Dun, 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 dun. Wait, wait, which one for Tokyo Drift or this one? Yeah, yeah, Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift is like. Dun, 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 dun. I can't do it. There's too many things going on. It's like a synthetic song. I can't do it. But uh, all right, we'll figure we'll have it, it ready out. next time. <laughs> all right, thanks for listening, guys.